Kırınç vat verin. Dur. Kırınç vat verin. Sel. En kal. Ver mesel var. How much of that complex world you now take for granted would still be there? The fuel that special case was six fury shillings above what the present offered them, on condition that the rest of the workers sanitation uh, take less. Water supply. Uh, we don't think that it would be the wish of the workers. The rest of the union. High technology not medicine. Wish to think that we would fail. And the big doctors can become the pockets of other electricity. Just the hard pet that the miners are there. What kind of communication? How would you travel? Where would you go to find food? Would the social fabric still be there? Would anything? South America and Central America is littered with territorial disputes. And many of them will know that if one country succeeds in getting territory by invasion, there'll be a lot of invasions on border territories uh, in, in South America and possibly in Central America too. I mean, we have one. We have a garrison in Belize still. Uh, that garrison is kept in Belize, even though Belize is now independent in case of invasion.
recruited by the Eighth Regiment's Colonel, the Prince of Wales. He insisted on rising early on his first wedding anniversary to greet each man personally as the battalion flew in on four separate transports from Ascension. Between flights, the Prince took the opportunity to walk down the lines of relatives for whom the past two and a half months have been spent in anxious very serious but despite sacrifice all the elation, there was more than a tinge of sadness. The 36 members of the 1st Battalion did not return. in Tate Road, Sutton, saying they were checking locks. Police are advising elderly people in the area to be on their guard. A British punk rock group is claiming they're behind a fake tape recording which fooled the CIA. The American intelligence agency thought it was part of a Soviet disinformation plan. Here's Andrew Parkinson. The genuine voices of Mrs Thatcher and President Reagan. Through the crackles, he seems to be saying he'd fire missiles at his allies to keep the Soviets back behind their borders during a war. You mean Germany, Mrs Thatcher incredulously replies. But it's all a fake made by punk rock group Crass. Band member Andy Palmer. We cut up two speeches, one of Reagan and one of Thatcher, and sent the tape anonymously to the continent with a covering note saying that it was a recording of a crossed line. The tape came into the hands of the CIA, who studied it, and then issued a statement saying it was part of an increasingly sophisticated Russian disinformation campaign. Now the CIA is clearly embarrassed by its mistake, but why did Crass do it? People know that governments are corrupt, 
people know that governments are violent. We did the tape to show that they're also small-minded, petty and stupid. For the CIA to issue that statement shows just how petty they are. Now the group's touring the states, giving interviews about how easily they fooled the West's largest intelligence network. British Rail Services into Victoria and... Hello. We need Phil. We need sixty for a sell-off. Hello. Hi. Hello. Kenny. Yep. Kenny, this is this is Patty Conishiro. Right. Um, I I just want to ask you a, a couple of questions about uh, this tape. Yep. We were listening to it earlier. A lot of it we can't really understand, but basically one of the one of the obvious questions would be why your band crashed had decided to do something like this anyway. Well, the obvious answer to that is that we um, set out to embarrass the Reagan-Thatcher alliance to demonstrate to the common people of the world the utter stupidity of their governments and the very real danger that the paranoia of world leaders poses to the common people. Um, effectively, we were putting out a demonstration um, a possibility that the common people can stand against governments, can stand against oppression. How successful do you think you have been in embarrassing <coughs> both of the governments? Well, in the sense that the State Department in the USA was sufficiently convinced by the tape to uh, need to actually disclaim it, um, indicates the, A, the utter stupidity of that department, the uh, sort of blind naivety that they have. If they were convinced by that tape, you've heard it, you've heard the quality of it, and that actually convinced the State Department sufficiently for them to disclaim it. Um, and that should be an indication to the common oppressed people of the world that we can, if we choose our methods, work towards the destruction of these oppressive governments. I think we have been very successful. The uh, response to that tape's been enormous. It's now worldwide. So the joke has been laid, and you're laughing now, what happens? Um, I wouldn't say that we're particularly laughing. I mean, what we aim to do, and have done in the past through other methods, is to create a network throughout the world um, of oppressed people, of oppressed common people. I mean, I don't know whether the people in America realize that 90% um, of the population of Great Britain regard America as an oppressor, in the way that the people of Poland regard the Soviet Union as an oppressor. Uh, we are a country under occupation. Um, there's 120 American military bases in this country. Uh, we are totally in the stranglehold of American economic and military uh, pressure. We have no basic freedom. Um, this applies on a cultural level as well, in just the same way that America destroyed the ethnic culture of Hawaii, so it's destroying the ethnic culture of Europe, of Britain, of Middle America, of South America, of Africa, of the Far East, of Japan. Um, what we are aiming to do, what we hope to do, is to stir the people, the common people of the world, to realize the sort of dreadful oppression, the dreadful destruction that the two major powers of uh, Soviet Russia and uh, capitalist America um, pose to us as people, the threat that, those, that, that they pose. Your aim of having the world see and, and laugh at, the, at both governments and yep. see how totally idiotic both governments are mm -hmm. has been successful, so you say. I believe it what, has. What, uh, where, what is the plan now? I mean, is, is the crash ban going to uh, be a, 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 a political force and, and in, in, in take this any further than what it has been? Well, I mean, this is simply the tip of an iceberg. I mean, we know that throughout the world people are working uh, in sim similar areas to us, um, both above ground and underground. Um, I think there is a growing awareness amongst the millions and millions and millions of oppressed people in the world, um, that they are being used by the powers, you know, that, that we are little more than slaves 
to our either capitalist or communist masters. Um, the people cannot be held in chains much longer. We're not prepared to be held in chains. Um, we're not prepared to see cultures destroyed in the way that we're, I mean, in Nicaragua we're about, almost inevitably about to see an American invasion in Nicaragua. Um, on and on and on, the multinationals sort of putting their iron grip on the common people of the world. The common people of the world are not going to accept that for very much longer. Um, our job is to, on the one hand, warn governments, and on the other hand, to act against them. Not as a band crass, not as the band crass, you know, but as the common people of the world. And we believe that we are simply a very, very, very small part of an, an enormous consciousness that is opposed to that form of oppression. What, um, let's see, what else is we going to ask you? I think that just about covers everything that we were going to say as far as the political stand. Mm -hmm. um, how were you able to actually put the, the tape together? Um, well, as you know, the tape was made up of um, various speeches um, made by Reagan and various speeches made by Thatcher and uh, effectively it was a purely physical task of, of, of putting little bits of pieces of words and half words together until we had what we wanted. Um, I mean it was simply two and a half months of very hard work. Kenny, what is your last name? Rambo. Can you spell it, please? R-I-M-B-A-U-D. And you are a member of the group? That's right, yeah. Do you play a certain instrument? Yeah, a, a drum. The drum? Yep. How many members are in your group? Uh, well, I mean, it's hard to define, really. I mean, in terms of actively play, playing on a stage, there's generally around ten of us, you know. In terms of playing on the world, there's millions of us. And really how, successful are, how successful are you? Uh, well, without being immodest, I'd say that we are the major punk band in this country and probably um, in the large amount of the um, world beyond this country. Oh, I see. Okay, well, Kenny, thank you very much for, right. for talking to us. I appreciate it. Thank nice. you. Okay, nice week with you. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Hold on a sec. Sure. I'm there, actually, sir. Hello? Right Hello. Hello. My name's Ian Willits from National Public Radio in the All States. Right. Yep. Um, and Washington had just rung up yep. and asked t me to do something on the, the story of the Reagan-Thatcher tape. Right. right, yep. I'd like to get hold of a copy of the tape, if I may. Yep. And I'd also like to interview one or two or more of the class. Right, so you are, I mean, I am one of the band. Right? You're not speaking to John Lodi, you're speaking to one of the band. Oh. Um, hello. Who am I speaking to? Uh, Penny. Penny. Yep. Um, what would you want to do? You want to do a live interview or...? No, 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 I'd come down and, and <laughs> tape an interview. Right. Fine. Well, that sounds pretty good. We can, we can have it. Uh, do you want the tape when you get here or...? Yes, that would be fine. Okay. When do you want to do it? What time tomorrow would suit? Uh, let me think. Uh, should we, should, can we provisionally say two in the afternoon? Uh-huh. Um, and I'll have to confirm that uh, when some of the other members of the band come in. Sure. Yeah? Fine. Um, okay, I'll pencil you in for two o'clock. And you'll be here. Whereabouts? Uh, it's 10 Middleton Road. 10 Middleton. That's M-Y, Middleton. N uh, M -Y. Right, Middleton Road. Yeah, uh, N-22, that's Wood Green. N-22, yeah? Wood Green. Lovely. Okay. Great. Thanks very much. All right. So we'll ring. Will you be there at eight in the morning tomorrow? Uh, there will be someone here from eight, about eight fifteen. All right. Two five seven two seven five two. That's correct. Okay. 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 Bye. Getting in touch with this. In, in touch with you? Yes, that's right. Yeah. About what? Well, um, what happened was that we we produced a tape which was um, a cut up of a conversation between Ronald Reagan and Margaret Thatcher 
um, which we produced just before the uh, the election. Um, we distribute it on the continent uh, anonymously. Somehow it got to the states. Um, the state department in Washington issued a statement saying, to quote, this is part of the um, increasingly sophisticated Soviet disinformation campaign, which is obviously incorrect. Um, however, it, that Associated Press got hold of it and printed quite a lot of articles in the States. Um, subsequently to that, the Sunday Times of the 8th of January um, printed an article called How the KGB Fools the West's Press. Um, no, I know about that. You, you know about that? That's well, right. I think, I'm, I think another person may be contacted you because for us it's clear. Ah, yeah. right. Maybe another person contacted you from Novosti. Well, maybe, yeah. We maybe. have a correspondent here. Yes. Maybe I you need him? Yes, that would be good. So, but this to us, uh, just a moment. Uh, but who has given you our telephone? Uh, Paul Lashmar from the Sunday Observer. Um, who did a who did an article? In fact, I mean, obviously, the Sunday Times was was merely acting as a mouthpiece for the. Well, it's clear, it's usual thing. That's like, right. Yeah. Blame Russians. That's right. Oh no, I'm not. No, I'm not at all. But I mean, what happened was that uh, Paul Lashmar did his homework and managed to find out that it was us who did the tape and printed an article in the Sunday Observer. Yeah, the su and blamed the Russians. That, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. The uh, the Sun the Sunday Times did, but the Sunday Observer didn't. Okay. No, I was just I, all I was interested in was seeing if you wanted to put the record straight. That's all. Uh, nine three seven. Yeah. Uh, forty two fifty eight. Right. That's the one I check it once again. So you can ask Mr. Volovitz. How do you spell that? V O. Yeah. L O. Yeah. Right. Just a moment. So, he writes for Novosti. Right. So, maybe he will be interested in that story. Okay. Just a moment. Uh, yeah? Right. Okay, That's great. Awesome. Thank you very much for your help. Bye-bye. Would I Lie to You, White Snake. That's a single taken from the album Come and Get It. Sounds like a hit too, doesn't it? Thanks to John of Westwood Road in Portsmouth, uh, Portswood, Southampton, for writing in. Uh, he heard me playing the crash track that we played the other day, Where To Next Columbus. And John feels that I rather went out of my way to apparently sensationalise the band and not emphasise the music that they played. John, uh, if that's what it sounded like, my apologies. The reason we're playing their records is that I think they're rather good, and so does Mike Hawks, my producer. Here's another track from the album Penis Envy. It's Dry Weather. More than I 
Dry Weather. That's crass from their album, and uh, I think an excellent bit of music. That's for John. Now, Annie Lennox and Dave Stewart, you'll remember as being part of the tourists who had a lot of hits there in the last couple of years. They're back now under a new...